Today is the day. The day most of us with a deep love for Ryzen, but not so deep pockets, have been waiting almost a year for. The day 500 series motherboards with PCIe 4.0 support finally become mainstream. That's right folks, B550 motherboards have officially arrived, and in this video we're going to see whether all that waiting around was actually worth it. And the board that's going to help us do just that is ASUS's Tough Gaming B550 Plus, which should deliver all of the performance we could possibly handle, and do so at a price that our wallets can handle too. But before all of that, let's take a quick look at what we get in the box. First up we have the box itself, which shares the same design as the other recent Tough Gaming motherboards in ASUS's lineup. Then at the top we have the board itself, which we'll take a closer look at in just a bit. After removing the structural divider, we can see that ASUS has gone with the no-nonsense approach here only including the stuff you'll actually need. Well that and a collection of shiny stickers that I would never actually use because I'm just not cool enough. Then we've got a quick start guide along with a little certificate of reliability that lists all of the tests the various components of the board passed in order to get the Tough Gaming stamp of approval. Next up is the manual filled with manually things and a driver DVD, you know, just for decoration or something. The first of the things we'll actually be using are two black SATA cables followed by an M.2 screw package, a little rubber sticky thingy for the M.2 pad, and a stylishly simple IO shield. Then finally we have the board itself, and if you've seen the Tough Gaming X570 or the Z490, then there's no big surprises here. The Tough Gaming B550 Plus looks very similar to both of those, and honestly that's not a bad thing. I didn't initially love the whole black and grey with yellow accents aesthetic of the Tough Gaming lineup, but it's actually grown on me quite a bit. Those yellow accents add to the board's character and don't distract from the overall look of the system as a whole nearly as much as I thought they would, and they actually tie the whole look together pretty neatly. Couple that with some badass looking VRM, chipset, and M.2 heatsinks, and we've got a surprisingly good looking board on our hands here. And even though you'll only see it like once or twice, the back of the board doesn't look half bad either. But looks are superficial and don't even make it into the top 5 of the board's main selling points. What does make it pretty high up in the list though is the B550 chipset itself, which brings with it some key features like support for blisteringly fast PCIe Gen 4, when partnered with a 3rd gen Ryzen CPU, overclocking support, and promised support for AMD's upcoming Zen 3 based processors. But as you'll see from my testing and benchmarking a little later in this video, even those of us with a 1st or 2nd gen Ryzen chip can still benefit from the new tech. Feeding that chipset, the power hungry Ryzen chips we already have, and those upcoming processors is no easy task but it's one that the Asus Tough Gaming V550 Plus seems more than ready for. It promises rock solid performance, and looking at the power delivery Asus has built into this thing, I have very little reason to doubt that. The board comes equipped with 10 DRMOS power stages in an 8 plus 2 configuration. Power stages that have already proven to provide stable, reliable power on even Asus's own much higher end and much more expensive motherboards. That along with military grade chokes, premium capacitors with very high temperature tolerances, and one of the best VRM controllers in the game shows that this board means some serious business. But with serious performance comes some serious heat, and luckily Asus should have us covered on that front too. The board is equipped with 2 ounce copper layers sandwiched along with the PCB layers, which should help spread and dissipate heat away from the critical areas. While two beefy heat sinks with lots of surface area increasing fins, and good quality thermal pasts are tasked with handling VRM temperatures. The board also includes a fairly chunky chipset heatsink along with a very sexy M.2 heatsink, and when you combine all of that with ASUS's extensive fan and pump controls, I wouldn't worry about this thing not being able to handle the heat. And the board isn't just tough on heat either, it's also just, you know, tough in general. We've got a reinforced PCIe slot, electrostatic discharge protectors for pretty much all of your connected components, along with your LAN port via ASUS's tough LAN guard tech, and lastly we've got some serious overvolt protection for IO ports and DRAM. Now, before I go ahead and put this board through its paces to see whether it lives up to the hype, we have to take a quick look at the rest of the specs we missed. Memory wise we have 4 DIMM slots with a maximum support of up to 128GB, with overclocking support for up to 4600MHz when paired with a 3rd gen Ryzen chip and up to 4800 MHz when paired with a Ryzen Pro chip. Expansion and storage is where we find the triumphant entry of PCIe Gen 4. The top PCIe connector comes equipped with 16 Gen 4 lanes, while the topmost M.2 socket is wired up with 4 Gen 4 lanes. Now, unfortunately, in order to cut costs, AMD had to ditch PCIe Gen 4 lanes connected directly to the B550 chipset, which means that the only usable Gen 4 lanes are provided by whatever 3rd gen Ryzen CPU you pair it with. This means that B550 can physically only support two PCIe Gen 4 devices at any given time. 
which is one of the biggest drawbacks of the B550 chipset when compared to the X570. But to be fair, if you can afford more than one of the insanely pricey PCIe Gen 4 drives on the market right now, you're probably not looking at getting a B550 board anyway. If Gen 4 isn't really your jam, the board also includes a full-size PCIe 3.0 slot, along with three 1X slots, an additional M.2 socket for PCIe 3.0 drives, as well as six SATA 6 gigabit ports. Oh, and the board also officially sports two-way Crossfire X for those of you who just can't let dual GPU die. Rear I.O. port-wise, we've got a relatively robust configuration. At the top, we have two USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, one of which is Type-A and the other Type-C. Then we have a very useful BIOS flashback button, followed by a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port, though if you want to go wireless, the board also features an M.2 slot for a Wi-Fi module, and then two USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports. After that, we've got connectors for both HDMI as well as DisplayPort, followed by two USB 2.0 ports, and two more USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports. And rounding things out are your typical audio jacks. Now, I won't be going over the extensive list of internal I.O. ports, but it has all the connectors I personally need and more, and we've even got a Thunderbolt header, which is pretty dope to see. Something else that definitely deserves a mention here and kicks off our testing for this board is ASUS's inclusion of some impressive audio features. The board ships with Realtek's S1200A codec, which along with some impressive shielding provides a pretty dang impressive audio experience. An experience that should be made all the better thanks to the inclusion of DTS Custom specifically tuned for gaming. This feature should add to the immersiveness of games pretty significantly, although I'm not personally a fan of surround sound software, so I didn't play around with it all that much. But the main reason I'm bringing audio into the mix here is because ASUS has equipped the Tough Gaming B550 Plus with something that I would and did actually use, noise cancellation software. Now noise cancellation software has been making huge strides lately with Nvidia's RTX voice being an exceptional example. But the performance hit from using software like that can often outweigh the advantages. ASUS's take on noise cancellation software claims only a very minimal impact on performance, which I can definitely confirm, while also doing a pretty impressive job of eliminating background noise. And here's what it sounds like using the mic on my SteelSeries Arctis 5 headset. Okay, so we're in the Army Create app right now, which is where we find the option to turn on AI noise cancellation. So I'm going to go ahead and start tapping away on my Cherry MX Brown keyboard while also clicking my mouse a bunch. And all of that should be coming through very annoyingly and very clearly, and it's just not a good time. But once I go ahead and enable AI noise cancellation, a lot of that background noise, if not all of it, should be cut out almost entirely. Now, the AI noise cancellation is currently set to medium, so let's see what happens when I switch that over to high. Now, what I'm suspecting is happening here is that my voice is a little robotic, but most of the background noise is being eliminated, which I think is a pretty fair trade-off. Now, just for contrast, we're going to go ahead and switch on over to the low setting, and this is what it sounds like. Now, even on the low setting, this should still be doing a very good job at getting my voice through loud and clear while cutting out most of the background noise and it's all actually pretty dang impressive. I'm gonna go ahead and turn AI noise cancellation off again just so you can hear that I am still clicking away on the keyboard and clicking my mouse and yeah I am actually impressed. Yeah I didn't expect that to work nearly as well as it did. Sure there was still noise coming through and my voice didn't sound quite as crisp as I would have liked but even so, I was pleasantly surprised. Now, we've covered pretty much every aspect of the Tough Gaming B550 Plus, except for one important detail, performance. So without further ado, let's just get into it. Unfortunately, I didn't have access to a third gen Ryzen chip to comprehensively test with the board, meaning I couldn't really test anything related to PCIe Gen 4, but what I did have was my trusty Ryzen 7 1700 along with a Ryzen 7 2700X, so I went ahead and tested both of those chips in various configurations, including running both on my X370 board for comparison's sake. Now, while I did also test the CPUs in both motherboards running at stock settings, I focused primarily on getting the highest stable overclocks I was able to get out of both chips and my 2666 MHz RAM kit before benchmarking. And here are the results. On both the X370 and B550 boards, I was able to hit a max stable overclock of 3.9 GHz all core with my 1700. But memory-wise, I was able to push my RAM kit all the way up to 3200 MHz on B550 before timings got a little too loose for my liking, while the max I could get out of my X370 was only 2800 MHz. With that configuration, I fired up Cinebench R20, and the results were fairly close, but with the B550 still taking the win. On X370, my 1700 managed an all-core score of 3603, and a single-core score of 373. While on B550, we can see a decent increase to 3,660 on all-core and 380 single-core. 
Just to see what that would translate to in games, I tried Civilization VI and got another close race. With the X370 config managing an average turn time of 40.4 seconds, and the B550 config scoring 40 seconds flat. When it comes to Shadow of the Tomb Raider, things tip a little more decisively in the B550's favor. On X370 we got an average of 94 FPS with relatively decent lows, while on B550 that average jumped to 97 FPS with similarly improved lows. The B550's overall win largely comes down to the improved memory support, but when we look at the power draw, it seems like the X370 is at a bit of a disadvantage here too, with the B550 just purely being able to supply more of it, and do so more stably. And it was a similar story when I switched over to the 2700X. My X370 seems to simply not be able to provide as much power to the chip as the tough gaming B550+, Plus, which resulted in a max stable overclock on X370 of 4GHz all core, while I was able to get it to 4.15GHz on B550. With that and the memory config from our previous tests, i.e. 2800MHz on X370 and 3200MHz on B550, I fired up the benchmarks again. And this time the B550 decisively outperforms the X370. In Cinebench, our X370 config managed an all-core score of 3812 and a single-core score of 396, while our B550 config ramps things up to 4016 all-core and 420 blaze it on single-core. In Civilization VI, turn time on the X370 averaged 39.4 seconds and 36 seconds on B550. Then in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the X370 config averaged 97 FPS with decent lows, while the B550 config just misses out on 100 FPS with even more solid lows. <sighs> now, obviously this isn't an apples to apples comparison, but it gives us a pretty good idea of the performance the B550 brings to the table. Or more specifically, the performance the Tough Gaming B550 Plus brings to the table, thanks to fantastic memory overclocking support and superior power delivery. All in all, the B550 chipset seems to be everything we hoped it would be. That being a cheaper X570 with only non-essential stuff cut out, and an entry level foothold into AMD's next gen lineup. And while the Tough Gaming B550 Plus isn't exactly the cheapest option out there, it delivers the performance that it advertises on the box and comes packed with a ton of useful and not so useful features that should give it a leg up over other boards in its price range and even some more expensive boards. And I think that's pretty dang cool. And yeah, that wraps it up for this video. If you liked it, go ahead and tap that button, get subscribed to see more videos like it, and let me know in the comments if you're actually planning on getting yourself a B550 motherboard. I will be dropping an Amazon affiliate link for the board down below, so if you want to grab it and support the channel while you're at it, at no extra cost to you, then do check it out. And then finally, I have to give major props to Asus South Africa for providing both the board and the 2700X for me to test out. So go and show them some love. And yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace!